everyone. Welcome to meal kit number 25 for the week of November 10th to the 14th. Thanks for ordering this week. Uh, thanks for being here and thanks for watching the video. I, uh, I always love uh, when people get a chance to enjoy this as, uh, as they're prepping their meal. So uh, let's just get into this amazing uh, menu this week. So the main course, smoked Cornish game hen from a small little farm in Quebec that we deal with. So it's a 20 minute uh, warm up. So I put it in the oven about 10 minutes ago to get a little bit of a jump start. Um, and it's just roasting along nicely. We uh, smoke it for you in house. So it's basically fully cooked and it's got that nice smoky component to it. Um, and the whole kitchen smells beautifully and smoky um, at Becca when we're making the stuff. So uh, while that's roasting away, we are going to uh, dress up a salad, then we're going to start working on uh, the main course components. So um, we've got a really beautiful uh, green and red blend of radicchio and arugula tonight, and a, a whole bunch of awesome, bright, colorful ingredients. So we're going to take our corn, pickled corn and our poblanos for a little bit of heat. Now, if you guys don't like spicy, you can just hold off a little bit uh, on that. And we're gonna take our buttermilk dressing and use it all in there. And give it a nice little stir. And while I'm doing this, I'm gonna talk to you about the white wine that we have paired with the appetizer this week for our dinner for two meal kit, which is a Vernaccia de San Germiano. I'm horrible with Italian, so I apologize to any Italians out there, but uh, it's a delicious wine. Um, Connor, our wine director, uh, talks about this one. Grown in the hillside vineyards surrounding the Tuscan town of San Gimergino. Uh, this wine is made entirely from Vernaccia grapes. Uh, the final wine exudes fresh, lively character, um, all organic, uh, and just really nice herbal quality. I find Italian whites can sometimes be a little searing in terms of their acidity, and this one, not so much. It's got a nice roundness to it, so they've, they've given it some extra uh, richness by leaving it on the vines longer to be able to get that nice um, uh, ripeness to the wine. And that is going to go beautifully with the buttermilk because um, you want a wine that is as rich as the food that it is accompanying. So in this case, we've got the sweetness from the buttermilk, the sweetness and the acidity from the buttermilk. We've got a little bit of spice from the poblano. We've got the corn, which offers some acid as well because it's been pickled. And then you get the brininess from one of our favorite producers, Fogo Island. We've got their shrimp. So you just top it with the shrimp it's quite a generous shrimp portion. I should say that this is a shrimp salad that happens to have some arugula and some radicchio in there. There's a lot of it. Make sure it's all nice and pretty. And then next up, we're gonna to top it. Oh, don't forget some salt and pepper. And then you're just going to finish it up with some uh, dill to make it really pop and bring that freshness out. There we are. So we clean up the edges. And that is our Forgo Island Shrimp with Radicchio Arugula pickled corn, poblano, and buttermilk dressing appetizer. Awesome. Now we're going to get on to the main courses. So first thing we want to do, a couple tablespoons of, you know me, I love the grapeseed oil. You can use canola oil or any na uh, neutral oil, but because we're going to get a little bit of heat going on on this, we're going to heat uh, the pan to high. So you want a neutral oil rather than olive oil because olive oil can um, can start smoking a little bit and that's no fun. So we're going to clean this up. Don't need any of that. Um, I'm so excited by this dessert. I'm looking at, at the garnishes uh, and it's just great. So um, uh, tonight's dessert is an apple and cardamom molasses cake with salted 
apple dolce de leche and spiced walnuts. Um, now you can garnish it with sort of whatever you like. I'm gonna try an apple because it has apple in there and I might actually do one with blueberries as well and see which one looks a little bit better. Um, so next up, we are gonna make sure that our sauce is heating up on medium and that our lentils are also heating up. So that's getting nice and hot. Lentils are going in the pan with um, a tablespoon of butter. So again, the lentils are already cooked, but we wanna get a little bit of butter to warm them up. Okay, now tonight, you should have vegetables, three different vegetables in your box. So see if you can identify the parsnips from the shiitake mushrooms, because they kind of look similar, because the parsnips are gonna take a little bit longer than the other items. So um, let's go back to Rich's instructions here. So pan on high, add two tablespoons of canola oil. Uh, start by caramelizing your par parsnips for two to three minutes, then add your shiitake mushrooms after that, an additional three minutes, and then add your Swiss char and one tablespoon of butter per person. Okay, so keeping that in mind. So while that's going on, We ask you to um, spin around. I've got this tiny little whisk here uh, for your sauce, because that wants to heat up nicely. The same thing with our lentils. Okay, um, and dessert, I wanna make sure I'm timing this properly because the dessert only takes five minutes in the oven. So I feel like we're getting close on that. So I'm gonna drop my molasses cake in there to warm up. Ooh, the smoky quality is so beautiful with the hen right now. So with the apple, I'm gonna cut it the same way that um, the folks at Beck to do, and I'll see if I can pull this off. So nice and thin, but you can use any fruit that you have at home. I just like apple because it's bright and red. See if I can do a little fan like they do. Haha. <laughs> Take that pastry chefs. I can do it too. So we're gonna we're gonna add that to the, the cake when it's all done. Okay, so that's boiling along well. So um, Chef Rich and I went back and forth when we were doing the the instructions and the menu planning. And um, the sauce is actually uh, a sauce lee, which is sort of a thick uh, demi-glaze of a hen, uh, but we decided to call it a gravy instead um, because sauce lee I had never heard of and I assumed a lot of other people had not heard of it. So there you go. It's a sauce lee for those uh, who love the purest um, and uh, a hen gravy for those uh, who may not speak French. Oh, I am a huge fan of the Vernaccia. But let's talk about the red wine that's going to go with the hen. So this is, a, I know how to pronounce this one, Schio Patino from Bastianich in the Frulli uh, Coli Orientali uh, 2018. Mm. It's very herbal and smoky, actually, which is beautiful with this hen. Okay, so I think we've done three minutes on the parsnips. So take the Swiss char out and we're gonna throw the shiitakes in there. Get them all sauteed nicely. And then after three more minutes, we are going to um, throw the Swiss char in. Okay, I'm gonna turn the lentils down because I had them up too much by accident. Okay, veg coming along nicely. So the lentils are gonna go down first and then we're gonna we're gonna get the hen um, uh, out and put it on top of the vegetables. Okay, so the Bastianich. So uh, uh, Joe Bastianich and Lydia Bastianich own some amazing restaurants in New York City, but they also make their own wine um, from this part of Italy. And I've always been a huge fan of their wines. Um, the Schio Patino, I don't even know what to compare it to. Um, 
you know, it can be uh, like a like a beefier Beaujolais, but that smoky quality is so unique. Mm. And it's going to be great with the hen. The way Connor describes it, spice, uh, red floral, sweet, light, a delicate red raspberry, cherry, and strawberry fruit. Um, I'm, a, I'm just a big fan. Connor, you did well again this week. Okay. So the jus looking good. The sauce Lee. Turn that up just a little bit. Because I want the consistency to be a little bit runny. Because it's a little gelatinous right now. And that's when you get that really big reduction of the hen bones. Um, it can be a little gelatinous. So turn it up um, until it's a little more runny. Uh, that's in there. Okay, let's go to our lentils. So the lentils should be seasoned. So you, you don't need to put um, salt and pepper already on them. Yeah, my oven is beeping at me. That's the thing about induction ovens. They like to give you a crap when you haven't done something properly. Or other ovens, not so much. I missed my old oven for that. There was very little on the beeping side. So these are Dupuis lentils, which are the greatest lentils in the world. Um, ironically, I think these are grown in Saskatchewan, which is like the lentil capital of the world at the moment. Okay, that guy is good, so we're gonna take it off. Okay, next up for the veg, we're gonna throw some butter in. Give it a little creamy quality. Butter makes everything better. Swiss char is going in there. And this is where we hit it with some salt and pepper. Never thought I'd be recording food shows every week. But hey, pandemics make people do some strange things. Okay, I'm going to turn that down and just let it finish. You don't want the Swiss char to, to shrink up too much because it has some beautiful quality to it. Um, the, the color really pops, and that's why I love Swiss char. Uh, okay, so the lentils are down. The veg is going next. Make sure if you've got a nonstick pan that you got the right tongs for it. And make sure you have some green sort of sticking out the side because the green, again, really makes things pop. Also make sure you're balancing the parsnips and mushrooms with each person. So one does not get too many. And while this is going on, I want to tell you guys about what we're doing for Christmas time. Um, Peter Hum from the Ottawa Citizen reached out to me today and said, you know, I know Christmas parties were a huge part of your business uh, in previous years, and obviously we're not allowed to do that right now, but we are open inside, which is so exciting. Maximum four people per table, and I think we're going to stay that way for a long time, is my guess. So no Christmas parties, unfortunately. Here's our hen. Um, so what are we going to do? Well, I think what we're going to do um, is we do these curated packages at home. We actually have a bunch of really big orders. One, um, one is for the Snowsuit Fun Gala. Oh, smells so nice. So you got the hen jus, make sure that you get it right on there. I'm gonna whisk this around. Um, but yeah, so corporate groups. So if you're thinking you want to do something nice for your staff, if you've got a company, then um, email yamadbekta.com and we can put together a great dinner for you. Um, some groups have done, you know, a bottle of our famous Blonde Bekta sparkling uh, and a cheese and charcuterie plate and then a Zoom wine tasting. We also do a Zoom wine tasting where we break up... Um, you know, four or five bottles and send a small portion to a bunch of different people. And then we, then our awesome sommelier Connor can uh, do a Zoom wine tasting for your group. And so that's a lot of fun. So keeping that in mind, if you're looking for something for your, for your company, 
for your friends or family and you're anxious about not getting together. So let's see which one's best. I think we're gonna go with this one. So this is our smoked Quebec Cornish game hen with the Dupuis lentils, roasted parsnips, uh, shiitake mushrooms, and Swiss char. Very nice. And of course, we're gonna finish it off with a little bit of finishing salt all around and some fresh ground pepper. Good for the photos too. All right. And usually I plate dessert beforehand, but I didn't get the chance tonight because we were right on this. Molasses cake, apple molasses cake. Turn the oven off. All right, oh, haha. I forgot, you gotta put the, the dolce de leche down first. So the salted apple dolce de leche. And sort of spread it around the bottom of your plate. It's sticky, so it's hard to work with. But using the back end of your spoon, you should be able to spread it nicely. And if you get, get it nicely spread out, and you'll see it around the edges of your cake. If you guys who have watched this before wonder how I do this week to week, I kind of make this stuff up as I go along and then the chef kind of points me in the right direction the next day. All right. Bang, look at that. Gorgeous, okay. And the chef was so excited by getting these walnuts back in that we used to have on the old Bechtus, um, uh, on Nepean Street. So I'm gonna do one with the apple. I think that'll be the one that we, we go with for the picture. But I'm also gonna do one with some blueberries for fun and see how that works out. Yeah, I think I'm going apple. Again, make sure to always clean your plates. And this is the apple molasses cake um, with the candied walnuts and the apple salted caramel apple dolce de leche. Thanks for joining us this week. Uh, I hope you really love your meal. And thanks for all the support. I hope to see you in the dining room. And uh, if not, I hope to see you again at home real soon.